and talked to some fourth graders. And the first question the young lady asked me is, why are people trashing my neighborhood? I didn't have a good reason. I didn't have a good answer for her. It is so frustrating that people think that this, this makes sense to destroy our community um, when um, we know that those people who live there that are already hurting are going to be the ones that pay for that. Not yet. We can get that information to you. Mayor, what, what do you make of the criticism that uh, your words might have encouraged some of the activity on the street today? I, I'll say the, the very um, blatant mischaracterization mm -hmm. of my words um, was not helpful today. I was asked a question about um, the property damage that was done. And in answering that question, I made it very clear that we walk a balance, uh, we walk, we balance a very fine line between giving protesters, um, giving protesters, peaceful protesters, space to protest. What I said is, in doing so, people can hijack that and use that space for bad. I did not say that we were accepting of it. I did not say that we were passive to it. I was just explaining how property damage can happen during a, a peaceful protest. It is very unfortunate that members of your industry decided to mischaracterize my words and try to use it as a way to say that we are inciting violence. There's no such thing. There was no order to the police to hold back to let some of this happen during the protest. Absolutely not. Absolutely not, and I've never said anything to the to um, to that to that fact. Absolutely not. Um, what we did was manage a peaceful protest in the best way possible, and it, and when it got violent and destructive, we we uh, responded to that. Uh, we have an obligation to protect. Uh, people's First Amendment rights. We also understand through the best training and best practices that we have to do everything that we can to de-escalate. And those, those were the tactics that were deployed yesterday. Did people exploit those tactics or that, that space that we gave to, you know, that, that we facilitated to have peaceful protests for bad? Yes, they did. But we didn't endorse it. We didn't, uh, you know, I didn't, I, we don't endorse it. We didn't allow it. We went into it. And we went in using best practices to. You don't uh, think it's a mistake to uh, allow people to have a peaceful well, protest? Right, not for the de-escalation strategy. That's best practice. Any Mayor, other questions? What's the plan now that night is falling? So as I mentioned, we have the juvenile curfew uh, for 14 and under. That's 9 p.m. We will be enforcing it. Um, 14 to 17 is 10. PM. We will be enforcing it tomorrow. Uh, there will be a citywide curfew, as I said, 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. in the morning. Let me be clear what that means is if you are not, um, if you don't have, if, if you are on the streets, it, was, it will be for two reasons, medical emergency or you're going to work. That's it. Do we have any updates on the police officers who were injured? We know seven were injured, one was unconscious. Do we have an update on that? We, Kowalczyk, do you have a, do you want, do you have to come? We know right now it's 15 officers that have been Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. So, um, unfortunately, uh, at this point, 15 police officers are injured. Of the 15, two are still being hospitalized at this moment. Um, the others have been released, minor injuries um, at this point. Did you know how those officers were injured, the two hospitalized? How were they injured so badly? So what we know right now, just preliminarily, is that uh, objects, uh, bricks, bottles, I'm not sure exactly specifically what it was, but it was flying debris that caused the injuries. And did they have helmets on? Did, did they get hit in the head? I'm just trying to some that. did, some did not. Do we know how many groups there are or how large this, how many people are involved in this? Uh, in terms of a number, I can't, I can't really tell you. I can tell you earlier, part of the day, around dismissal time of schools, I know around the Montdomon mm -hmm. hub, we did see uh, an excess of uh, 75 to 100 school age uh, kids um, that was causing a lot of problems up there. A majority of the officers that were injured in the incidents that occurred around that Montdomon hub was coming from, like I said, flying debris. And from what we can tell, it looked like it was school age kids. The good thing is that we have a lot of video um, that we're easily able to, over the next couple of days, really and safely say we track them down and find out who's responsible.
But didn't the department know on social media that this was going to happen? I mean, everyone knew that Mondawmin Mall was being mentioned on social media and that the students were planning on meeting there. Could more have been done by the department to stop this before it got out of control? So we, uh, yeah, we monitor social media. It's no surprise. Um, and we did know that there was mention of something that was going to occur there. So what we did was we pre-deployed. So we actually were out there before uh, dismissal time. Are you satisfied with how the department handled the response at Mondawmin, looking back? Uh, I, you know, um, it's, it's, it, what I can say is that uh, I'm not happy that 15 officers were injured at this point. Um, I'm not happy at all. Could we have done things differently? Uh, you know, we have to sit back and, and really assess that. But it's it's right now, you know, like I said, the 15 officers were injured. It's, it's two of them are still hospitalized. It's, it's unacceptable. Do you know how many arrests we have in the ballpark figure? Like, in just like, generally speaking, how many people have you pulled off the street through all this? Prior to me coming over here was about maybe 27 uh, arrests, and that was about maybe 30 minutes ago. Let me ask you a quick question. Um, moving forward, what role will the National Guard play in assistance with the police, and how do you see all of this ending? It certainly seems from what we've seen uh, today that this looks virtually impossible to stop. I know it's not, but it's, it appears that way. How do you plan on getting a hold of this whole situation? In a couple of ways. Uh, first, the National Guard will be deployed in collaboration and cooperation with the Baltimore City Police Department. There are several ways that they can be used, and we will we will determine that. It has not been determined yet. Uh, we will, um, once we get the exact number that will be deployed, we'll, we will make a determination of how to best use that number uh, to provide backup and support uh, for the uh, Baltimore City Police Department. Um, with respect to how do we get to order, let's be clear. Uh, you know, I've, the, the council president and, and I share the frustration of the, the, uh, the negative images that are being um, shown of our great city. Uh, but best believe we're going to use all of those images to hold the individuals who are destroying our city accountable. So, um, once people start getting arrested for the looting, for the destruction, uh, I think they will understand that it, this is uh, not a lawless city. And the, the thugs and the, the, the you know, it, 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 I'm at a loss for words because it just doesn't, it, it is idiotic to think that by destroying your city that you're going to make life better for anybody. Uh, and once and uh, after we as we start to review uh, the um, you know the tapes that we have from all, you know our own uh, police video as well as what we're able to see from the different outlets um, we will be holding people accountable we can do one more guy Your Honor, uh, uh, this afternoon one of the leaders of the peaceful protest made the public call now shall come to the call is that the sort of uh, invitation that you I, I, anyone who uh, wants to add to the the calls for peace in our city is welcome. I would, if, if uh, Reverend Sharpton wants to come, if parents want to encourage their children uh, to, you know, act within the law. I just, I met with young people this afternoon, young people who want peace, young people who want justice. Uh, they were given their own suggestions on how young people themselves can add voice uh, and, and try to add a sane message, a message that says we don't, it's not in our name that you are doing, that you are destroying our city. Um, anybody that wants to be a part of sending that message, I, I welcome it. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, we're working that out with school police. I mean, with uh, this, the school system. Thank you very much.